Welcome to another History Wanderer video and today's topic is the history of a quite a remarkable man a man who probably more than any other person during the Second World War was responsible for the defeats of Nazi Germany and you'll be even more surprised to hear that the man's name was Wilhelm Canaris who was born on the 1st of January 1887 in modern-day Dortmund. So, Canaris was a German national. In 1905, he actually joined the German Navy. And during the First World War in 1914, he was serving aboard the SMS Dresden, who, who, who at that time was part of the East Asia Squadron. He participated in the Battle of Carnal, which resulted in the sinking of two British armoured cruisers. And it was only his skill at tactics and advice that, that left the Dresden the only ship in the German flotilla which survived the Battle of the Falkland Islands. After the First World War in 1919, he helped to form the Free Corps in an attempt to change the political outlook of the country. And in the 1st of January 1935, he was made head of the Erwwa, or the German Intelligence Service. And while he was there, he actually made friends with another man who became responsible for the internal spying of Nazi German which was Reinhard Heydrich, who of course was assassinated in um, Czechoslovakia, in Prague, by the Czechoslovakian resistance. But I'll cover that on a, on a future video. But now back to um, Canaris's brief rundown of his life. In September 1935, he visited Warsaw after the German army had successfully managed to conquer Poland. And what he saw in Warsaw actually upset him that he very nearly cried. He was brought very nearly to tears with the exterminations and the shootings and the mass murdering he saw. He then went back to Berlin and complained to Wilhelm Keitel, who at that time was the head of German chief of staff. And Keitel basically just said to Canaris, Hitler is giving orders that this has to be done. The cleansing has to be carried out and told not to complain again. And if he was um, anywhere troublesome, then like Blaskovitz, the, the German general who officially complained in writing, he would just be stripped of his post and could even be interned and put in a concentration camp. So above board, he carried on doing his duties. But what he did behind the scenes is he arranged for Helena Sizemska, a Polish national who was rumoured to be his lover, but it's not certain whether she was or wasn't. But he arranged for her to go from Poland to Switzerland on condition that she passed any information he gave her onto the British intelligence. He then deliberately only trained spies to about nine tenth efficiency. So as then they could facilitate the capture. Either as soon as they landed or by giving themselves away by dressing them incorrectly or landing them in a place where they get covered in mud so as then to be easily identifiable. Another thing he did as well, he set up at least two lines of communication to pass on information to the British intelligence via the Vatican. So the Catholic Church was actually complicit in passing this information to the British. And he was that successful in what he achieved that there wasn't a single Nazi spy on the British Isles who the British were unaware of. 
he they even landed some spies in america but two of those spies went straight to the nearest police station and confessed that the authorities that they were spies the result was they was arrested and in prison for the rest of their life whereas their colleagues were hunted down caught and they were executed in december 1940 he was sent to spain to arrange for, to see if he could get franco to join the axis but he cut an agreement where spain would only join the axis after great britain had been defeated so in effect what he did there is he blocked a possible ally from joining the axis in february 44 himmler was convinced and he also had numerous meetings with hitler and finally convinced hitler to sack canaris as the head of the avoir and the head of the avoir after this they moved under the control of the ss in late february 44 he was placed under house arrest and full arrest on the 23rd of july 1944 he was then put on a show trial on the 9th of april 1945 at the flossenburg concentration camp and he was executed by hanging and in his hanging they actually humiliated him the best they could they stripped him naked they walked him around the concentration camp before they executed him so that's a brief rundown of what he did in his life but what he actually achieved was nothing short of miraculous he wasn't taken from office until 1944 by that time the Germans had already reached their high watermark by 1943 they'd reached the limits of their expansion so him being in charge of the German intelligence up until this point had a major impact on the outcome of the war and this is um, more identifiable on two theatres of operations the first one is during the Battle of Britain if the Nazi state had successfully got even a handful of spies onto the mainland Britain these spies could have notified the Luftwaffe High Command of the ineffectiveness of the attacks and also the attacks they made on the airfields were not the right airfields they could have told the German state where the main manufacturing plants for the British aircraft production was they could have told them where the aircraft on RAF bases were stored and maintained but because the Luftwaffe didn't have this information they had to keep guessing they had no idea how many planes Britain was producing they had no idea on the main places they were stored if this information had come to the Luftwaffe they could have successfully bombed these targets along with the decision to stop bombing the radar if German intelligence had discovered how effective the radar was they'd have focused more results on blinding fighter command and the outcome quite possibly would have meant the loss of the Battle of Britain because if the Spitfires and Hurricanes couldn't scramble in time because they've been blinded by radar and reserve, relying on the observer corps to get airborne they won't be able to get to altitude in time to intercept and the other area which is why I'm showing me playing Silent Hunter 3 was in the North Atlantic because the Germans didn't know what was happening they had no more than 12 boats at sea at one time and they had to cast them out in a broad net hoping one of the U-boats would spot them send a message to the U-boats to form a wolf pack one spy in New York could have sent to Berlin 
when a convoy was mustering, particularly with American servicemen, when it was mustering and when it was getting ready to set sail. So then the U-boats would have been prepared for the departure and even one spy in the harbour could have even got the route the convoy was to take. If that had happened then the U-boats wouldn't even need to send a message for them to be able to triangulate using high frequency direction finder to locate the U-boats which was a, a system known more locally as Huffduff. But by having two stations set equal distance apart they detected the radio signal and by triangulating them two points they could pinpoint where the U-boat was. But if the Germans knew the course of the convoy because a German spy had told them they wouldn't need to broadcast. They'd only have to listen from Berlin of where to go and where the convoy would be at whatever time. This would have meant that the convoys coming across the Atlantic but also the American servicemen who crossed the Atlantic who participated in the torch landings in the landings in Italy and also took part on D-Day the vast majority of them wouldn't have been there because the convoys would have been lost at sea and this is all down to William Canaris there was some doubt of like other pieces of information that he passed on to British intelligence but unfortunately I'm unable to garnish any other information he he passed on to the British whether it's locked up in an archive somewhere or it's still under the official secret act, I can't discover and I don't want the um, British intelligence knocking on my door saying excuse me you're looking at files you're not meant to be so I'm just limiting this to what I know he did do but I know there'll be a hell of a lot more of which we don't know that he actually did and for me the amazing thing there's not a film about him there's no books about him and it seems like history has just airbrushed him completely out as someone as irrelevant I mean even Reinhard Heydrich has had at least three films made about his assassination and this impact on the war regarding the Allies being victorious is negligible whereas Canaris he actively went out of his way to make sure that Germany would lose the Second World War and I think there should be at least a film made about his life if not a film made about his life then they're definitely in Berlin or Dortmund or somewhere in Germany they should recognize this man's bravery and without a doubt they should be looking at putting up a statue or a plaque of something to commemorate this very brave man who in the end for his beliefs paid for it with his life but if he hadn't done what he did it's quite possible Germany could have won the Second World War so for that I'll leave you with this video and give it some thought leave your comments below ring the notification bell and please subscribe and until then until the next video thank you for listening